Are we alone in the universe? I've always been persuaded by the pure statistical argument that given the scale of it, there's bound to be, and you mentioned yourself, you talked about there's loads of planets and the Goldilocks yeah. zone uh, all around the universe. Surely there's intelligent life somewhere out there, right. so statistically the, speaking. Right, so, so the, I like to make the, the following analogy. So I believe that there's no intelligent life in the universe. And well, especially, <laughs> I mean, especially on this planet. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. This, this planet's uh, the, the worst except for all the others. Yeah. Um, so uh, I believe that we become very uh, enamored of this notion. Again, there is some primordial beauty to the notion of escaping and thinking about things that transcend our limitations of time or space or existence. And one of those is the existence of other life forms that may exist in, in the universe. First of all, we can say there's zero evidence for such life forms, even a slime mold on Enceladus, you know, in our own solar system. There's no evidence for it. And that's important because uh, there is a concept pur purported by the man who coined the term Big Bang. Actually, you guys are the perfect people to ask this. I've never gotten a straight answer. Is Big Bang a dirty word? Is it a dirty phrase? No. No? No? Because supposedly Hoyle, Fred Hoyle, Sir Fred Hoyle, is one of the greatest astronomers in history, he coined the term Big Bang as a pejorative meaning orgasm. Oh. So that's never said in this country? We had a better sex life than we <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I didn't know that. No, I, yeah. don't, I don't think it okay. is. Nobody would. So nobody he was, he was a proponent either. of the steady state model. <laughs> uh, but, but in any case, he, uh, the, he also came up with the notion of what's called panspermia. Can I say that on this show? Yeah, you say, say whatever, whatever, you whatever you want. It's right. a free speech on show. This, it's a free speech show. Great. So the notion of what's called panspermia, it means that, uh, that there will be exchange of material between planets and between other star, star systems in our galaxy. Mm -hmm. And that will potentially uh, be a, an almost like a Noah's Ark for life to transport. It doesn't solve the origin of life problem, but it could potentially solve the uh, abundance of life problem in our solar system or how, how did it come here. He claimed it could have come from another, another planet, uh, not too far away by cosmic standards. So it gets here. Now, I actually have some of this. And as we said, there's meteorites and so forth that are found in Antarctica. It's a well-known phenomenon. I actually have a tiny piece of Mars. It doesn't have any amino acids or DNA or a little uh, green men on it, but it comes from Mars, and we can prove it comes from Mars. Uh, just trust me. We have it from many other bodies in our solar system. So why is that important? That means that things can come here. Well, guess what? That means that things can go from the Earth out there, right? So you have to answer the question, what is the probability? And what does it say about life in the universe that we haven't found life, say, on Mars. Now, Mars is a big place, and yeah, if we went somewhere on Earth, but almost everywhere on Earth has life, almost everywhere, even Antarctica, where I've been. Antarctica is one-seventh of the total number of continents on this planet. It's about the size of Australia, uh, so it's, pre it's pretty big. There's almost no life there, though. There's almost no, there is life, there's microbial life, there are these giant birds called skuas uh, that will, like, take a toddler away if the toddlers were allowed on the, on the continent, which are not. Um, and then there's sea lions, a couple penguins on the coast. That's about it. There's no polar bears or anything like that. Um, and then there's humans. So you're talking about, you know, this vast continent, the size of Australia, hundreds of times, or, you know, tens of times bigger than the UK. No life, almost no life. But if you make the argument that life should be abundant or based on statistical probability, as Fermi did, Enrico Fermi, one of the greatest physicists, he created what's called the Fermi paradox. There's so many planets, there's so many, they didn't know about the Goldilocks zone back then, but they said if, uh, if the average lifetime of a technological civilization is even a million years, then just in the age of our galaxy, which is, which is maybe eight billion years or, or more, uh, that means we should have been visited by thousands and th even going at a slow chemical rocket speed. So he asked the famous question, where are they? So we have to ask, where are they? And, and come up with solutions to that Fermi paradox. And there are many purported solutions, but one of which is there are no aliens, right? I mean, the most simple thing based on evidence is that there are no, certainly technological civilizations that we're aware of There could be beyond what we're aware of. Now, the best calculations do the following. They don't say, and as I don't say, I don't say there's no life. I say the probability is very small uh, and certainly even smaller for technological life. It has to be even smaller, right? If there's a dolphin swimming on a, on a pool in Enceladus, we're never going to know about it because it doesn't have an iPhone to let us know that we live there unless we stumble upon it, right? So it has to be technological. How do we get to that technology? It comes back to what we said before. We start with primitive things. Maybe uh, are hydrocarbons necessary? Is global warming a, a trademark, a hallmark of civilization? Some say it is. In other words, we should look not for uh, transmissions of, you know, I love Lucy, but we should look for global warming on another uh, planet. So far, we haven't seen it. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, 
but that would mean terraforming and, and modifying the, the, that particular climate. Now, did they have a biosphere? Did they have chlorophyll? Did they have a great oxidation event? Did they have a Jupiter that sucks up deadly asteroids from impacting the, the Earth or whatever the analog Earth is in the Goldilocks zone that's not in the Goldilocks zone? Do they have a moon that's at the exact right distance to create tides that can cause chemical intubation almost between uh, life, land, and sea? Uh, do they have plate tectonics that we talked about? Are those plate tectonics lubricated by these microorganisms? So there's many different hurdles. And the way I like to say it is, so you can phrase it like this. Imagine that there were eight things that had to happen for us to have this conversation under these lights and camera, right? There had to be a big bang. <laughs> you know, there had to be uh, the formation of matter from no matter. So people think that matter is conserved. It's not energy is conserved, but matter is not. Then there had to be primitive elements that could support life. Then life had to come about and be conscious. Then that life that was conscious had to create technology and so forth. So you just go through and you say it like this. And then there had to be things that prevented it. Asteroids, there had to be dinosaurs that, got, that were there but got killed off and fossils and so forth. You just say there's eight of them and each one has a probability of one in a thousand. That's it. Just say one in a thousand that there's a big bang, whatever that means. One in a thousand that there's a Jupiter. One in a thousand, and we know the probabilities are much, 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 much lower. But let's just say for the sake of the argument, one divided by a thousand. There are eight of those, you take one over a thousand, you raise it to the eighth power, you get one in 10 to the 24th. That same number is the inverse of the number of planets we think there are in the observable universe's history. So over 13.8 billion years, we think there have been 10 to the 24th which is a trillion, trillion planets that could be life inhabiting. But the probability, I just said, is one in 10 to the 24. So, that, so the problem comes about, the human mind is incapable of multiplying a zero by an infinity. And that's why the statistical argument, I think, is a, a very crude but often overestimate of the probability or possibility of technology. So the emergence of life on Earth is so ridiculously unlikely. That's right that for that to be replicated anywhere in the universe, even with the number of planets that exist, is still extraordinarily unlikely because it was so unlikely that it was formed here. Yeah, and there's so many contingent things that have to occur which, in just the right order. Which brings us inexorably to the final question of the three that you always get asked, Yeah, which is about where life comes from. Yeah, so... 